Specificity refers to the idea that adaptations from training are specific to the training performed itself. As a natural consequence, when you want to get better at squatting, for example, some people will say, just squat. However, what do we actually know about specificity and how we should incorporate it? Welcome back, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here. And actually today, we're kind of talking about something that I've researched indirectly. So let's get into it. Specificity is kind of a buzzword. People use it a lot to justify a lot of things. But I wanted to look at what do we actually have evidence for? You see, when it comes to progressive overload or to specificity or to exercise variation or to any of these training principles, they're often commonly assumed to just hold true for some reason. But equally, if we don't have evidence suggesting that they're right, empirical evidence, we're kind of just guessing and making generalizations. And so here are the four areas where we actually have evidence, to my knowledge, of specificity applying to performance improvements. Number one, specificity does seem to apply to the exercise modality. Specifically, we have a meta-analysis comparing strength gains when training with free weights versus with machines. And indeed, if you want to get stronger at, say, machine work, you see greater improvements in your performance with machine work if you actually train with machines and vice versa. If you want to get better at free weight exercises, like the barbell squat, training of free weights seem to improve strength in those exercises to a greater degree. And so improvements in strength and performance seem to be modality specific. So if you have a machine-based goal, most of with machines. On the other hand, if you're a strength sport athlete, like a powerlifter or a strongman athlete or a weightlifter, it would probably behoove you to do most of your training with free weights. With that being said, in this meta-analysis, they also looked at non-specific or neutral strength, essentially strength measured not using free weights or not using machines. And actually, when your strength goals are not specific to a certain modality, like you don't only want to get better at machines or only free weights, you just want to get stronger in general, you can likely be pretty flexible with your modality. The second area of research where we have some evidence of specificity applying to performance improvements is range of motion. In my meta-analysis, my own, the one I wrote, you feel me? Soon to be doctor, I remind you. We categorized performance outcomes as either being a full range of motion, a partial range of motion, or being neither, so kind of outside the range of motion or just kind of in the middle of both. And what we saw is that when a group trained the specific range of motion of the outcome, they saw better performance improvements. And so if you're a powerlifter who wants to improve your squat to parallel, for example, you should probably do most of your training only within that range of motion. So yes, performance improvements do seem to be range of motion specific. And in fact, strength and performance may not just be range of motion specific, but might actually be resistance curve specific. One thing that's been seen in the literature every now and then is a shift in the length tension relationship. Essentially how much tension is a given muscle or muscle fiber able to produce as its length changes. Now we translate this to the squat, for example, this can mean how much force are you able to produce at parallel, near lockout, halfway up, etc. This is just called the length tension relationship. And what we found in literature every now and then is that through training, we can shift the length tension relationship to get a bit stronger at certain parts of the range of motion. And so strength seems to be resistance curve specific, potentially by making certain parts of the range of motion more challenging, like by using bands, you're causing your body to adapt more strongly in those positions. And so if your goals are not involving bands or not involving that resistance curve, using a different resistance curve may actually worsen your strength gains or performance gains a little bit. Number three, specificity also applies to loading range. Now, this is mainly the case for maximum strength. It is actually contentious whether or not this applies to sort of strength endurance or higher rep strength. But for maximum low rep strength, there is definitely a specificity component to how much weight you're lifting. If you want to get stronger at low reps, you do need to lift heavy. The adaptations are distinct between lifting heavier and lifting lighter. And so for strength athletes, most of your training should be pretty close in intensity to those low rep ranges. Different clothing? Don't worry about it. We thorough over here, you feel me? One final thing I forgot to mention is that strength gains seem to be both movement and velocity specific. The idea that strength gains are movement specific was beautifully illustrated by a recent study by Plotkin and colleagues. One group did only squats. One group did only hip thrusts. They measured squat, deadlift, and hip thrust strength. Where are the results? Well, the squat group gained the most squat strength. 
the hip thrust group gained the most hip thrust strength. Finally, in the deadlift, gains in strength were similar. Gains in strength may also be velocity specific. So, if your goal is to deadlift as much as possible for one rep, the velocity of that outcome will be pretty slow. So for some of your training, you'll be wanting to lift pretty heavy and therefore also pretty slow to train at the same velocity as your outcome. The same could potentially go for something like jumping, where jumping velocity is actually pretty fast. And so when lifting for that strength, for that outcome, you may want to be lifting at a pretty fast velocity. So we know strength and performance is pretty specific. Does that mean if you're a strength athlete or you want to get stronger, you need to be specific all the time? Like if you're a powerlifter, you need to always do singles only on the squat, bench, and deadlift, ideally in a singlet, because that's most specific? No, not quite. Keep in mind, your strength and your performance don't need to be peaked year round. You only really need to be strong and athletic when you want to be. For competitors, that can be during competitions. You don't get awards for being really strong in the off season and then not showing up on game day, right? Equally, if you don't have any competitions coming up, you're just doing this recreationally, you don't need to worry about being peaked year round either. You just need to worry about being strong, for example, when you're maxing out your lifts. Here are a few cases where you wouldn't necessarily want to be super specific. There is likely a diminishing return situation. By having about half or say three quarters of your training be pretty specific, you know, mostly the competition lifts, mostly pretty heavy, you're likely getting almost all or all of the benefits of being specific within your training for powerlifting. At some point, going from say 80% of your training being specific to say 100%, it's unclear how much more benefit that would give you. And because it's unclear how much more of a benefit that could give you, this has to be weighed up a little bit with the benefit of being a bit less specific. And here are some of the potential benefits. First, muscle growth probably helps with strength. Getting bigger, all else being equal, will probably make you stronger. And using a variety of exercises, some of which won't be perfectly specific, can actually lead to more hypertrophy. As a recent study found, using a variety of exercises is better for growth than just using one. The second potential reason is just monotony. For a lot of people, they don't necessarily enjoy doing the exact same exercise in the exact same rep range in the exact same style, day in, day out, week in, week out. At some point, it just gets a bit boring. And so if only for the sake of breaking that monotony a little bit, having some variation in your program and not being perfectly specific all the time can be nice and beneficial. And shit, if breaking that monotony makes you a bit more motivated and makes you train a little bit harder, it may actually directly enhance your strength as well. Next, for mixed goals. Let's say, for example, you have strength goals, but you also have muscle growth goals, or you also have power goals. For other goals, sometimes being super specific to only one goal actually can hold you back. Like I mentioned, if all you ever do was singles on the squat, bench, and deadlift for a powerlifter, but you also had muscle growth goals and physique goals, like having bigger arms, doing singles on the squat doesn't really grow your biceps very well. And so not being super specific when you have several conflicting goals can be really beneficial for overall goal achievement. Finally, and this is a bit more speculative, is number one, injury management or pain management. And number two, more speculative, injury prevention. So if, for example, you get pain from doing too many squats a week, like low bar squats, heavy squats, etc., then maybe incorporating some higher rep, high bar squats can be a nice way to manage that pain a little bit. And so by being a little bit less specific to something that is causing you pain, at least temporarily, that can allow you to manage that pain a little bit better while still making progress. Now, the second part of that, injury prevention, is a bit more speculative. But there is some data that athletes in strength sports whose exercise selection and specificity is generally a lot higher than physique sport athletes, seem to suffer higher rates of injury, potentially as a result in part of the greater amount of specificity that is beneficial and required for peak performance. So what are the takeaways from this video as far as your training and specificity are concerned? I'm going to assume that if you're watching this, you're someone who wants to get stronger in the big lifts or you're a strength sport athlete competing with free weights. Number one, most of your training should be composed of free weight training. As I mentioned, specificity applies to the modality that you use. Number two, most of your training should be within the range of motion of the target exercise. For example, most of your squats should only be to about parallel if that's where you squat to in competition. That being said, some partial range of motion training is fine and may even be preferable as mentioned in this video right here. Number three, resistance curve should be played with infrequently. For the most part, avoid using bands if the exercise you're trying to get stronger in 
doesn't incorporate bands. Number four, the loading range and the rep range you use should be kept pretty specific as you get closer to a comp or to a max out. Strength gains are also movement specific. If you want to get stronger at a specific movement, you should mostly be performing that movement. If you want to get stronger at benching, for example, you should mostly be performing the bench press itself. Likewise, gains and strength are somewhat velocity specific. So if you want to get better at grinding out a heavy one rep max, you should be spending some time grinding out heavy lifts. Finally, and this is important, specificity is not the only thing to consider in your program. It's not this ironclad principle that takes priority over everything else. Here are some reasons why you might not want to be perfectly specific all the time. First, you get diminishing returns from increasing specificity. Secondly, there are benefits of different ranges of motion, different exercises, and different modalities for muscle growth, which can contribute to strength. Third, breaking monotony. Having the exact same exercises for the same rep ranges all the time can be quite monotonous. Fourth, if you have different goals and conflicting goals, if you both want to grow muscle and gain strength, being super specific to the main lifts all the time may actually hold you back with that growth goal of yours. Finally, if you have some pain stemming from the main lifts, then not being super specific might be beneficial. Equally, and this is very speculative, so take it with a grain of salt, not doing the main lifts all the time and being super specific may reduce risk of injury a little bit. Anyways, that's the video. Specificity, biggest buzzword in the industry, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please comment, like, subscribe. It's like 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. We out here grinding, so please respect the grind, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace! It's sick, it's piss, it's revolting. Sorry, I'm an internet seller.